I revisit and reminisce about my original goose chairs from 1995. Then I joined Daryl on a drawn out combo and ended up with another limit of ducks and geese. After a massive thunderstorm during the night that shook things up, the specs still did it like no other. It can never be easy. I'm Claudio Angaro and I take people hunting. I woke up one day as a 27 year old school teacher and said to myself, I'm going to build a hunting lodge. That was in 1994. Now I lead my dedicated team of guides for 63 days each fall, exposing my clients to some of the best waterfall hunting of their lives. Controlled chaos, epic hunts across 5 million huntable acres. We are hired to hunt. I'd be lying if I told you this entire 28 years was a breeze and that uh, outfitting has been just a total walk in the park because it's not, you know, and you know, there's a lot of guys that get into it for the wrong reasons. You have to do it because you're passionate about people, you're passionate about waterfowl hunting, and you can't chase the money. I've always been so passionate and there's, there's two parts to my world. I love to build things. I love to be innovative. I look at things and go, hmm, how can I do this better? I realized this very quickly in 1994 where, you know, we had bad decoys back then. We didn't know it. And then, you know, we're hunting out of upright blinds. We used to call them willow blinds. In 1994, as the season progressed, we had more and more trouble killing geese. And as it got tougher, we need to get smarter and more creative. So the summer of 95, on top of building a lodge, in the back of my mind is like, oh man, how are we going to kill these things? And I didn't want to go through all that stress and the pressure, you know, having tough hunts and not succeeding and managing to control all of the controllables. It, it wasn't like uh, now where if you want to research, you know, the best ways to hunt geese, you Google the best ways how to hunt geese and you'll get 19,473,000 options on how to hunt geese and every product that goes along with it, you do that from your phone in the field. No, it wasn't like that back then. There was no internet. There was no Google. There was nothing. There was no YouTube. So you couldn't do any research. You just did what you did locally. And I, I thought, you know what? It would be easier to become a goose than to try to hide from it. And I just thought, you know what? A little lay down goose chair with a decoy on it. Me and my cousin at the time had a really small tree stand manufacturing company and just local production right here. We sold to a few guys, a few local stores. And I was an industrial education teacher and so was he. So there's nothing we couldn't build. And I just thought, you know what? I need to get my hands on, on a big decoy and I need to get a router and router a bunch of slats in it so we can see through it. And it needs to be comfortable and we need to be able to get these hunters in a shooting position quickly. And I did that, you know, and I referred to this earlier, but in 1995, right there on opening day, which was September 8th, while I spent all summer building a lodge, we managed to put some goose chairs together. These four guys shot a limit of Canada geese and I remember we did it in about 20 minutes and it was shockingly amazing how effective they were. Anyways, fast forwarding, we started building them and you know, we sold a bunch to Cabela's in the early years. There was no Cabela's in Canada, we sold them to Cabela's in the US. You know, we shot a lot of Canada geese. I mean, a ton of them out of the goose chairs. Just unbelievable. And we just called them goose chairs. That one right there is from 1995. It was simple and it was an easy name and, and it seemed to have stuck, you know. One thing we also tried, and I totally forgot I tried this, was uh, we, we developed a skirt for it, which is uh, very similar to a real low profile lay down blind. Uh, that didn't work so well. It, it, it was effective, but it was just so much work to set up. Just thinking back, you know, that was a long time ago. 1995 was a lot of hunting seasons ago. We've learned a lot. And what's funny is how uh, so many things have come full circle, you know. I see now there's a new product out there called the Goose Chair, imagine that. And then, uh, you know, the upright lines now are using what's called the A-frames, uh, which I find, again, kind of funny. 
you know, the lay down blinds, I believe that's an industry that, that will be around for a long time. You know, they're comfortable, they're effective. I'll tell you what, that Renegade Series blind by Cabela's, they did such a great job on that product. I mean, I know, uh, I know I'm sponsored by Cabela's, but I do need a product that works, is effective, and the clients enjoy being in too. And uh, we shot another limit of ducks and geese in this episode out of the Cabela's Renegade Series blinds. Very interesting on how times have changed. And, uh, you know, I believe why the goose chairs kind of went out of flavor was the advent of full bodies and how readily available those were. And it's really hard to mix in full bodies with super magnums and the goose chairs unless you have a whole bunch of them. So when I get to hunt with Daryl and the same group I hunted with the day before. Daryl and I are, uh, well, Daryl's guiding. I get to hunt again. You know, one of those situations here with the whole pandemic and the travel restrictions and the chaos. We only have three hunters at the lodge, which is pretty rare uh, for us. Normally, we're running two full groups, so I get to hunt. So yesterday, I was hunting in the afternoon with Mel, uh, wrapping up their day, and Daryl was out spotting. All right, so Mel put us on him again. I kind of shot him one at a time, but that's all right, the way they came in and uh, wrapped up a perfect day. 32 perfect ducks, day. 32 geese for the day, and it was good. Well great done, day. well yeah. done. Great good. day, great day. Tonight, we used the Dive Bomb Canada Goose Decoys. They did it. You know, nice tonight. We're in the Cabela's Renegade Series blind, shooting the Benelli's and the heavy shot stuff, and it was good. Did the stuff right on. It's cocktail hour. So we don't, I don't have any intel on this, which is kind of different, right? Because normally, I'm either hunting. Let them come, let them come. Rip them, they'll get too close. Go, 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 go. Or in the truck spotting, and I'm getting all the intel, right? And I didn't get that yesterday, so I'm a little bit removed. So Daryl, tell us what's going on here. And all right, so, well, we've been watching this field for four or five days now, and uh, it's been holding good numbers of Canada's for the whole time, but uh, the landowner's house is on the far end of this half section, so they're, they're feeding pretty close to the house for a while, and I've been waiting for them to slowly move over. Now it's uh, it's come together nice. There's a couple thousand uh, ducks in here, Ooh. pintails and mallards, and uh, probably about 260 Canada's, so all oh, big so big Canada's, yeah. Good, yeah. Yeah, nice, nice. traditional Alberta uh, field, you know, nice, nice barley field, good stubble, um, and you know where they're coming from, all the that stuff to the west, those yeah. potholes. So they're roosting nice and far. So it's uh, it's set up to be pretty good, yeah. And lots of roost water here, right? Yeah. Like this field, it's interesting how some fields are a little bit better than others for whatever reason, because they're all rolling pothole fields, right? Mm -hmm. But we've hunted this field, oh, for probably 25 years. And I, I remember from my first camp, <laughs> we found it and have been hunting this for that long. And, and it, what's really interesting is Mel's first hunt ever <laughs> He had four guys from South Carolina, and his first guided hunt, we were literally 300 yards away in a little <laughs> swale. And I, I remember bringing him in and going, okay, Mel, let's get you all set up. Crushed him 32 32. So if we can duplicate that today, that'd be, that'd be fun, awesome, yeah. you know? That'd be good. So we're all, we're pretty much set up. All we're doing today, again, the Cabela's Renegade series layout blinds, which are fantastic. And then we're using our band collector full bodies and two robos out front yeah and we're styling yeah we're sitting pretty good it done, man. all right right above on the left wind must be messed up a little bit wedges they're coming around from behind us yeah i see that go ahead on those two Good boy deke Oh. One really low, right over the mojo. Someone kill that one. Deke! Deke! Duck's right in the front. Kill them guys, kill them. All of them. Deke! Touch them up. Here, here. Leave that single. Watch the ones behind him. Mm -hmm. Get them guys, get them. Another four or five. On your toes. <laughs> Kill them guys. One and done. Single duck, watch your dog. You're okay. You can uh, shoot him on the left there. Someone kill him. Be careful. 
<laughs> Drop. Kennel. Right above us. Kill that single. Here, here, drop, good boy, kennel up. <laughs> Trying to get him to center. Kill those two right above you. He, he didn't, didn't get, get that one. one. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Limpy. Drop, back. <laughs> Yeah, they want the puddle. It's still early. They're not. They're not scared. They're just because they would never do that. You know, it's just starting. Yeah, here's five or six over the pothole right now. Here's the dogs coming in. Center up. <laughs> Center up. Come on, get them, guys. Get them. Here. 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 There's a flight of geese out there. There we go, boys. Kill those two guys, kill them. Daryl, that was amazing, dude. Hey. Well yeah. done. Lots of pairs this year though, hey? Like lots of up. pairs of geese, which isn't really good. Bad hatch, right? Like Boy. normally the parents with six or eight little ones. Mm -hmm. Definitely seeing more pairs than usual. Just haven't seen any of the volume yet. No. That's what I'm saying, right? Like it hasn't fired yet. That happened to me that remember that morning I was on that puddle? Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, we shot them one at a time. Three coming right in. <laughs> kill him, guys, kill him. No wind, right? We had the wind, those things would have come down wind. Right. Like, yeah, they just weren't cutting. Yeah, what I was saying though, if if we had wind, they wouldn't have even cut they wouldn't have approached here. No, they wouldn't. They'd have been two hundred yards downwind yeah. and Right? But even just a little bit would have helped to kick them yeah, right yeah, over yeah. us. Oh, yeah. Plus, right now they're flying downwind. Mm -hmm. They're they're going 45 miles an hour. You guys just can't shoot. I think that's the problem. What's that? You just can't shoot. Did that pair up the middle, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, get them. Ooh, nice shot, Brian. Nice Jay shot. said it's rocking and rolling, so who well, you knows? You the sun earlier than us, too, right? Yeah, that's Back. true. Single on the right. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> Kill him, guys. <laughs> nice shooting, guys. That was better, boys. That was awesome. That was beautiful. That's how we roll. Trying to keep, keep them off those birds, right? Oh, well. Trying to keep them really excited oh, so yeah. they don't set down. Yeah. Nice shooting, guys. <laughs> get him, get him. Oh, yeah, that bunch. That's all right. They're high, though. Coming off the uh, sunken pond there. Behind the house, I can see him getting up over the power lines. Oh, the sunken pond way back there. Yeah, that's where they roost. Here. Yeah, that's that's good. Right by Maryland's place. Yeah, like way in the valley. Do you kind of kind of on the tree, Daryl? I would. Yeah, we should. <laughs> Get those three. Nice shooting, guys. Brian, your side. Kill that one on the right. Brian, your side. Get him, get him. 
Nice. You get him? Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, Daryl, is that thunderstorm? I've seen that happen before. You wake up after like a thunder shower and you had it all dialed in. Look, where'd everything go? Yeah. Like what happened to two, we didn't see 2,000 ducks. You get a rain, it'll drive all those birds out. If they're getting pounded with lightning and thunder, yeah. I think it just scares them and they oh, go, yeah. well, let's get out of here. They move 10 miles to get away from it and it's over, right? They wake up somewhere else, fly around, find something else. I mean, they don't have to sit there and take a pounding, right? They can just, they just move. single. Nice shot. And try to push those robos out 15 more yards, Daryl. Yeah. See if we can get them to spill some air a little deeper. What time is it? It's early. Eight. It's eight, only eight. Eight forty. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Oh yeah, we got time. We got lots of time. Shoot that one. Nice shot, buddy. I didn't have my gun mounted. Or left. You've already pulled it up. What's <laughs> that? No, I didn't get that one. <laughs> no. I didn't even have it in the sight picture yet. Nothing. Shoot that one. Ouch. Oh. I got that one first, Brian. <laughs> Wherever the robo's. Oh, look at this. Get him. <laughs> I'm gonna have to tie him down. All yours, Mr. Outfitter. <laughs> oh, someone else can shoot. Get him. Oh, See what happens when Brian doesn't shoot? <laughs> we might we might clip away. Get that one. There it is. I didn't even get up because I didn't want to end 32. up. 32. Thanks, Richie. You're so a he nice does guy. know how to do it. Who? Huh? I want I him like to redeem often. himself. How many do you hunt like once a month? Hopefully no. Not, not no. even that? No. Like I really I've hunted yeah. more yeah. more since COVID than I have well, probably for 20 years. We huh. that one that went over. Well we have clients all the we don't shoot with clients, right? So we're always yeah, in the back, the back seat and Can you turn and shoot him on the left side there? He's right over your head. He was just banking behind you. Yeah. Kill him. Ha! I might, I might have gone off just a little. You did. <laughs> you got to be quick with you guys. Okay, Daryl. Daryl. Yeah. So now, if they're on the left, you say right. Okay. Right. Imagine six do that. It's over. Right. Six do that, I might sit and drink Crown Royal with you guys this afternoon. I've never done that. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Oh, look what's coming downwind of us. They might still come. We got a couple coming. Okay, guys, we ready here. Oh, yeah. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do it, guys. This is why you wait. Watch out, watch yours, boys. There he goes. Might be a wrap right there, we boys. Might well done, Jess. We might be one or two short after that. If that. that was sweet. That was wow. That's some good shooting right there, I boys. Get him!
Good boy. Hey, Deke found it, man. Good boy, yeah. Deke. <laughs> we look up, there's so, Deke coming out of the water with a big old goose in his mouth. Oh, oh it was, we, uh, yeah. we knew we had that, that one goose over the hill, and when we shot these seven, that brought us to 31, and that one there brought us to 32. So that's it, we're done, it's a wrap. Great day, absolutely great day, and these guys get to hang out this afternoon and have some cocktails. All right, so, you know, we, we were kind of hoping to go 32, 32 on this one, and you know, today it was it was funny, because the, the ducks that Daryl, you know, saw, which was in the 2000, and you know, we just didn't see a couple hundred, but we did have, a wicked thunderstorm come through during the night like we saw the lightning yeah. this area was all wet in the morning and anytime you get that pounding crazy action i've seen it before but there's definitely a disruption in the pattern that was evident today yeah. you know daryl tell us i mean you you're the one who spotted the whole thing and yeah i mean they've been in here for four or five days and good good numbers we had lots of ducks in here but uh I guess that's that's a testament of the volume we had is what we were able to still shoot a limit with what did come back because they wanted to be here and uh, you know we were in the right spot but uh, yeah with that storm it kind of we didn't see the huge volume of you know hundreds coming in the decoys that we might to see but uh, we still got them. Yeah so you know we, we kind of get it done every day right and then your first time here we like for you to see instead of ones and twos come in because you get that at home right yep. we want to show you those 40 and 50 and 300 mallards bowed up coming into the decoys and fortunately you got to see it with that last flight of specs i mean yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't get any better than that you know and and it's pretty cool that was a great way to end it and and you know one other thing you know we're sitting there going all right it's starting to taper off like really when you're hunting and and i can't stress this enough to the people watching who are going well you know why wait that's why you wait like what have you got to do at home? Paint the fence, go to a barbecue. Like you're hunting, you've gone through all this effort, stick it out. You know? Yep, on it. Yep. And really, what was it, like 25 minutes extra? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we might get you out of doing some chores at home. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on, good. Well, lunch awaits. He's famous cooking and let's go eat. Great, thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure.